Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the fifth video in the Modbus series, and we will continue using SDM32 as a slave device. In the previous video, we saw how to program SDM32 to respond to the queries regarding reading the holding and input registers. Today we will see how to respond to the queries regarding reading the coils and discrete inputs. As I mentioned in the previous video, we will continue using the same project, so you should watch the previous video first. I am not going to explain anything that has already been covered in the last video. So today we are going to work with the function codes 1, and 2. Note here that as per the standards, the master can request up to 2000 coils, or inputs at once. I have already written the code, and I will explain it in this video. This is the same Modbus slave source file, but I have added the functions for coils and inputs in it. In the Modbus slave header file, we had the database for the registers, but now I have also added the database for the coils and inputs. There are 25 bytes in the database, which makes up the data for a total of 200 coils. The only difference in the inputs database is that it's defined as a constant array, so the master will not be able to modify it in the upcoming videos. In the main file, I have added two new cases inside the switch function. For the function code 1, we will call the read coils function, and for the code 2, we will call the read inputs. I have also added an exception handler, in case an illegal function code arrives. Now let's see the Modbus slave source file. Here is the read coils function. The initial part of this function, is exactly the same as what we covered during the registers. We find the address of the starting coil. Then we find the number of coils the master has requested. If the number of coils is more than 2000, the slave will send an exception. Then we calculate the address of the last coil. Since we have only defined the database for 200 coils, if the end address is more than 199, the slave will again send an exception. If everything goes alright so far, we will start preparing the TX data buffer. First I am resetting the TX data buffer. Then start loading the data into the buffer. First we have the slave ID, then the function code, which is followed by the number of data bytes the slave is sending. We know the coils are one bit in size, so if the slave is sending the data for up to 8 coils, it will send one byte. Similarly if the slave is sending the data for 9 coils to 16 coils, it needs to send 2 bytes. I am using this formula to calculate the number of bytes. Say for example, if the number of coils are 20, the first part would give the output equal to 2. Since there will be a remainder when 20 is divided by 8, the second part would give 1. The total bytes in case of 20 coils will be 3. Similarly, if the master has requested 24 coils, the first part will give an output of 3. There is no remainder when 24 is divided by 8, so the second part would give 0. The total bytes needed for 24 coils will be equal to 3. We will store this byte count in the TX data buffer. Then I am defining an index variable to keep track of how many bytes have been stored in the buffer. Here I have mentioned the method I am going to use to copy the actual data into the buffer. Basically I am going to read one bit at a time, and store it in the buffer. Here first we will calculate the start byte, which is basically the first byte in the database where the copying starts from. Say for example, if the address of the start coil is 13, the start byte would be 1. Bit position is the shift we need to in the byte. For the address 13, the shift would be 5. So we need to shift the byte to the right by 5 positions to get the current bit. Index position is the shift in the current byte of the buffer data. We will store the bits right to left in the buffer, so the lower bits will be stored at lower positions, and higher bits at higher positions. Now comes the main section where we actually extract these bits and store them in the buffer. 
Since we are copying one bit at a time, the for loop will repeat as many times as the number of coils has been requested by the master. Here we will first shift the start byte to the right by the bit position, then extract the bit in the first position and shift it to the left in the TX data buffer by the index position. Say for example, if these are the bytes in the database, and the master has requested 10 coils starting from the 14th coil. The start address would be 13, and therefore the start byte would be 1, with bit position equal to 5. We will shift the byte 1 by 5 places to the right, and extract the bit at this position. Then we will store it in the 0th position in the TX data 3. Now the index position and bit positions will increment by 1. The index position is 1 and bit position is 6. We will again shift the start byte by 6 places to the right, and extract the bit. Then we will store it in the first position in the TX data 3. This cycle will continue. Once the bit position is more than 7, we will increment the start byte and reset the bit position to 0. Similarly once the index position is more than 7, we will increment the index variable, so as to fill out the next byte in the TX buffer. If the number of coils is not a multiple of 8, we need to increment the index variable again, before we can start copying the CRC. Then we will call the function to send the data to the UART, where the CRC will be calculated in the function itself. Reading inputs is exactly the same, so no need to explain it again. Alright let's build the code and debug it. Here is the master software again. The slave ID is 7. We will start reading from the first coil, and we will read only one coil. The function code is 1. Based on the above configuration, the master has prepared the query. Let's run the code now. The master has received the response from the slave, and here you can see the coil data. Since we only requested data for one coil, here it had received a 1. If you look at the database, here is the data for the first coil, and it's a 1. Now let's say we want to read 6 coils, starting from the first coil itself. Here we have received the data for the 6 coils, and this is exactly the same as what it was defined in the database. Let's change the start coil now, and this time I will read 6 coils, starting from the 19th coil. Since the start coil is 19, the data will start from here. Here are the 6 bits, and these are the same as what the master has received. Let's read 14 coils now, starting from the same 19th coil. Since the master has requested more than 8 coils, the data will arrive in 2 bytes now. Here you can see the first 6 bits, they are from the 3rd byte of the database. Then the next 8 bits are from the 4th byte of the database. For the final test, I am going to read 16 coils, starting from the 9th coil. Basically these are the bytes the master has requested. This is exactly the same data, what the master has received. Now let's quickly see the function code too, that is for reading the inputs. The inputs address ranges from 10001, to 20000. Here I am requesting the 16 inputs, starting from the very first one. Here we have received the 16 bits, and they are exactly the same as the first two bytes in the inputs database. Let's quickly see the exceptions now. We know the master can request a maximum of 2000 coils or inputs at once. So here I am going to request 2001 inputs. And we got an exception saying illegal data value. 
This is because we have set the limit of 2000 coils in the code. For another exception, let's say a master wants to read three coils, starting from the address 200. Since I have only defined the database for 200 coils, if the master's request has exceeded the last coil available in the database, the slave will again send an exception. This time it says illegal data address. Although if the master wants to read only the 200th coil, it can do that, since the data for 200 coils is available in the database. Here this bit represents the data for the 200th coil. But if it wants to read 201st coil, it will get the exception. So I hope you understood how to program the STM32 to respond to these coils and inputs queries. We will continue with the series, and in the next video I will cover the master writing the registers and coils. That would probably be the last video of this series. This is it for today's video. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.